Good afternoon. I'm on my way to uh, the best place to make the best steaks. I'm a South African. What can I do? So last week we discussed the spares. And this week we're going to discuss whether we actually do need a SSB radio. But before we get to the, the SSB radio, um, if you want to hear about the SSB radio, skip to the end of the video and you will see it over at the end of the video. But before we get there, there's still a few spares that we need to discuss. Um, and the spares that I could not fit into the previous video, but also we got actually from our video, uh, from our subscribers and viewers. So, they actually gave us a lot, you guys, the viewers gave us really a lot of insight of other things that we need to put on and other things that we need to get. Um, so let me, let me start with the spares that I could not put on last week and then we moved over to the viewers suggested we need to use. If I look at the, at the videos of other sailing channels and if they sail at night, I notice Delos is using infrared, passive infrared, which means their eyes is not, the night vision is not destroyed. But it does give you that eerie alien look. Now those eyes are so black or with the green glowing eyes, it, it, it looks strange. So I will look into, into, into having an infrared camera, but from my side, I would rather have a red light. So we were thinking of, besides the, the red light that's on top of the, of the um, alum, the alum station, I also would like to put the red lights inside the boat or inside the aft cockpit. So for those lights, uh, because you want maybe to go and make some coffee or get a snack to grab and then when you switch on that light you also again night blind again so the idea is is to get these LED strips I was looking into the organic LEDs um, I'm, I'm a sucker for technology as you know but the organic LEDs they are just damn expensive they are very expensive so I resorted back to the LED strips and if you notice the, the from the photo you will also notice that the LED strips that Leopard Catamaran is actually using also LED strips to do this indirect lighting which I just absolutely love I, I, I just love it so we will put the same strips into those indirect lightning position so that if you do switch on the, the night light the, the red light then it will be the same as the indirect lightning so it will not destroy our vision and we will can still sit even in the saloon in stormy weather or whatever um, and not destroy our night vision the, if I can recall the same picture from Leopard Catamarans uh, it's a pretty uh, it's also the the background of the Leopard 45 owners group um, picture if you look in that picture you will see there's a blue light coming underneath the boat which is the underwater lights there's a discussion going on in the group that these lights that Leopard is putting in might be not in a 100% correct position so I would like to, uh, to actually hear more about where to put the lights um, should it shine inwards should it shine outwards 
to the aft or to the front um, where is the best position to put the underwater lights keep in mind that we would like to see at night if we in treacherous waters like sandbanks or icebergs I know I get a lot of red lights on the, on the, on the icebergs but we will need all of that vision to try and show us where's the reefs or the, the, the shallow banks of the, the sand that is moving the, the sandbanks or and where is the icebergs below the water as well because the radar will miss them we will not go far speed but the radar will definitely miss them and I will have forward looking sonar so that I try everything in my in my power to see the, the dangers before I actually do too late to, to, to move or to stop or to go astern. So where do I need to put the underwater lights? Inside, outside, forward or aft? Where's the best position? Would you say? Please comment down below. And out spotlight. There's a couple of good spotlights um, that we are looking at. And the and and at this moment, I'm looking at the LED versions of the spotlights, not uh, the halogen or something like that. So I'm more interested in a, in a LED version of the handhelds. We arrived at Soul Farm. And, and good steaks. My mouth is watering already for the good steaks. So I will continue this discussion very soon but first let me get into the bar and order my steak. I'll show you the steak. It is just absolutely divine. See you inside. Um, I'm here now at Soul Farm and we all call it Nagusa's place. It's a very nice place here in La Longme. Um, if you see here behind me, there's some rooms here, so it's also a lodge. And if you check around, very cool place don't you say so let me show you the bar this is the bar So I'm now inside the bar and um, I think we can continue. I already ordered the, the steak, so the steak is on its way. So we were talking about the hand light spotlight, hand held spotlight. Um, that is one of the, and it must be very strong, very big, very good. Um, as you can see in the photo, this is the one that I'm looking at. So. Then also a printer. I saw from the winds that there was a printer. They use printers and also from all the other selling channels as you check in and check out of customs or immigration, you always need to print copies of the papers, your papers and application forms and things like that. So that is definitely something that I will put on the boat with lots of paper, of course. And then hair clippers. Hair clippers. So, what about hair clippers? So we will. If I want to keep my hairstyle like this, yeah, then we will need hair clippers. I'll show you a photo, and you can see how I looked with long hair. I had long hair at one point, um, so maybe I'll grow my hair again, um, do it the Brady style, that kind of thing. Uh, the beard, the clip, the beard, beard, maybe. Don't know. But yeah, so we were thinking of hair clippers and hair dryers. Um, the hair dryer, and because we have lithium, we can actually afford the hair dryers to, to run on uh, off our power supply. 
And you must have noticed uh, the Petrus long hair, so she might need a hair dryer. We're not really good, very hard fans of, of, of hair dryers, but um, yes, we, we might have one like that. Then propeller protectors. Um, people say propeller protectors, others say it's rope cutters. But it is basically, if you've noticed how many times, even the winds, um, also um, other like uh, Dallas, when they were in Mauritius, they, they had to dive into that yucky, very yucky water to actually do, to disentangle the rope. So I've got a couple of videos on this rope cutters, and it's basically in front of the propeller, uh, as the propeller goes through, and if the thing goes in, it will actually then cut the rope, or plastic, or wires, or whatever. So the rope, the propeller will not get entangled. So that is something that I want to have on a boat as well. <coughs> um, then Ruby Rose gave me a lot of nice ideas on, on emergency equipment, equipment like crowbars. So he had a, a, a two meter one and a small one as well. Um, hacksaws. Uh, so we will need a hacksaw, we will need a crowbar, and also a circular jigsaw, circular saw to actually cut the hull and plug it with a big piece of wood. Now that saw, I, I know I mentioned the saw before, but that saw also needs to be not electrical. So it will be a hand one, because if it's below the waterline, where you actually would like to plug the holes, then you cannot use electrical things. So it will also then be uh, uh, a normal one that you, no, uh, old style. Um, not really my, my style. Good evening. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the food arrived, and uh, here's a picture of the steak that I received, and you can see there's no green stuff. So, and then after I ate, uh, I ate uh, um, the steak, the football came on, and it became very noisy inside the, the bar. So, I watched the football with the guys, and now I can continue after, after that. Um, we were talking about uh, the printers, the crowbars, and pr propeller protectors. So I would like also now to say fishing tackle. Um, I don't think I want a fishing rod. So the whole fishing rod idea, I don't think that is a good one for me. I just is very temptation for the other people to take them. And so from my side, I would rather have the reel, like a, a big reel, like this big reel with the, and very thick um, fishing line on it. So now it must be a pretty big shark that will basically sink the boat, some kind of thing that will, <laughs> that will break the line. So I would like to have the, the, the reels and not the rods. And then also a lot of lures and Tailaska, 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 Tailaska device, I think. Um, if you guys have watched Catamaran Impi, at one point he actually just went to that big sail and he just released um, the, the power on the sail with a quick release. So I think that is a very, very um, necessarily tool to have on board and I think my, my, my big sails will have all of that so that if there's a big score coming through you can just pull the plug and the sail will release, the power will be released. Then I'm a Windows fan, not necessarily Android and so on. This phone is an Android phone and I have iPhones, I have Windows phones, I have all of them. Um, but it seems like some of the weather applications, like we discussed in a previous episode, is only running on Android devices and an iPad. So I will have, I'm not, still not sure which one it will go, but most probably it will be iPads. Um, and they will be just as backup devices. 
So the backup devices, so all our MFDs, the multifunctional displays, they can transmit via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And then these tablets, these tablets can then pick it up. And if we do chart planning and plotting, we can have them anywhere in the saloon or cockpit or even inside one of the cabins and do planning while actually having the real weather being downloaded or um, displayed and directions and things like that. So we can actually, that's what we want to do. Then the next lot is the viewer suggestions. So the viewers came up with a pretty cool things. And you already saw that I use a Ryobi or, and I, I dudes, I don't promote anyone's brand. Um, <laughs> it is just what I'm looking for and I see these things and what is available in Cape Town and what's not available in Cape Town. So maybe in your area there is a lot of other things available, maybe better ones. But if there is better ones, then yeah, that will be good if you can comment below and just let us know. But we do have Ryobi as well in South Africa. So since the Ryobi One Plus devices, they can all work on the same battery. So if if we have all the batteries charged for the different devices, and then if we do run out of power, we can just take one from the other one, plug it in, and we can continue with, with, with that too. So the flashlight is already a Ryobi LED flashlight. And I was thinking of a high pressure deck washer, not me, it was actually suggested by the viewers. And I noticed that the uh, Ryobi has that as well. Another one is a brushless drill, um, which is also a Ryobi wash, brushless drill. And also a right angle drill, that is actually quite interesting. Because there is tight spaces, so you cannot know, sometimes draw like this, so you can only draw with a thing like that. So we will, we will use in a right angle drill as well. Also a vacuum cleaner, Ryobi vacuum cleaner, so we can use that as well. Um, and in a very good suggestion that I actually, I, I saw it on Ruby Rose and I just completely forgot. Is inches. It may, your, your tool set must be um, metric and inches. Because not all the, all the places you go to will be metric. Like if you're somewhere in, in America or BVI, for example, then you might run into spares problem and you need to get spares, which will then be maybe inches and stuff like that. So the old people. So the new world, they all have metric systems. <laughs> yeah. And then, yes, I also discovered the same thing. Number 13 spanner. I'm not sure why that thing is always missing, but you need to have a box full just of number 13 spanners. So very good. Thank you for that advice. A fishing magnet like the winds. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a telescopic magnet, so there's a couple of them that I would like to have. Or uh, Earth rare air magnet, um, as the picture show. But you need to find if a little screw drop are somewhere in, then you need to be able to fish it out. And the same for the dentist mirrors or inspection mirrors. Um, you can get ones with little lights on it, but yeah, I would like to have a telescopic one so that you can actually look behind things. Um, especially in these little small spaces. Then a very good suggestion that I never thought of is a pop rivet gun. Um, I think that will come in handy. Hot knife, not so sure about the hot knife for cutting daggeron, but, um, daggeron, but I will definitely will have Kevlar scissors. Um, and I saw that this Sheffield is actually quite good, so this is one that I will be looking for. Um, rubberized type or electrical type, those type that you can seal. I think I mentioned that, but it was also mentioned again in, the, in one of the comments. Silicon sealer, and I think the Americans call it coke, coke, something. I just know it as silicon sealer because it is silicon and it seals, so it makes sense to call it silicon sealer. So we will have that in maybe in different colors, clear, white, and black. And then um, we, there was also a very good suggestion that we have, and, and as actually this photo is from this guy's um, suggestion, for a beach brine. 
we will definitely sometime we will do a beach pry and then we will need a, 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 a grill um, then someone suggested wicked lasers and I did not really think it's a nice toy and I, I have a couple of lasers here for the drones and so on but um, I think it's still actually a good idea to have a laser. Imagine if, if someone is approaching you on sea at night or something like that with good or bad intentions and if they see this big laser coming across they don't know whether there's a sniper rifle behind it or not. And I'm not into the gun debates, I'm, that is not the idea, but just for them to think twice, should I approach or should I not? If they're friendly people, they will approach, if they're not, maybe they will know what is a, a, a laser that's been pointed at them. Don't know if that will work. Um, bolt cutters, uh, Ryobi actually have electronic bolt cutters, but I think the bolt cutters will normally be used in a very difficult situation, like the boat is capsized or the mast has demasted and fall on someone and you need to cut cut through all the debris or cut it off the deck. Um, so then a bolt cutter, you don't want electric in a storm. You actually really want to be physically cutting these things. And this is the same for the axle, um, the electrical, uh, the stainless, the steel axle. Um, then someone, and I noticed it, I think, yeah, Dalo, uh, SLV was, was using it and um, Happy Together, they're using that as well, is the headsets. So someone said the alarm and someone in front can just talk. You don't need to shout and, and jump up and down. And since the, the Leopard 45 does have kind of like a blind spot on the, on the port side from the alarm, and since Pietro is a little bit short, she will not see that, she might not even see me, even if I'm tall. Um, so we, we are looking into that, um, into the headsets. Um, and I've before I've done lots of motorbike um, trips, and we used to have those motorbike headsets to person-to-person um, -person communication. So we're looking into that. If you guys know about a good set, um, if you know what Happy Together is using, maybe that will be good. But yeah, this this is a thing that I think we should look into. Good. Now for the topic that everyone was looking for and talking a lot. Single sideband modulation, SSB radio. This was actually patented in 1915 in America. And <laughs> it's very old technology then. It was also in general service in 1927 and I think it became a very popular after the Second World War, uh, First World War, where, yeah, I think it is the Second World War, where it became more popular. Um, so since then it was been used all over the world in most of the boats um, and it is it is on a very um, low bandwidth, low frequency, so that's why it cannot carry a lot of data. That's why um, if you look at microwaves or cell phones, they match higher band, uh, higher frequencies. So they can use limited emails and limited um, data files that you can download. You cannot download a movie, for example, or, or stream YouTube. So. One of the snacks is that it is 4,000 um, hertz apart, so you get these bands that's jumping like this. And this is where the little snack might come in, because if the earth is round, oh, I got my, my ball for my hand thing. If the earth is round, definitely not supporting flat earth society. If the Earth is round, then it bounces off the stratosphere. Uh, unlike um, VHF, we need line of sight. So if a boat is on that side, a boat is on the side, they cannot talk to each other. If the mast is long and that mast is long, yes, then they can start talking to each other. But the SSB can actually then bounce off and drop down there again to be received or a receiver on that side 
can then um, receive a signal from a sender on this side of the world. And they can actually go pretty, pretty far. They can go to up to 4,000 miles. That is pretty far. <laughs> it's just like almost across the, the Atlantic. Now the problem is, is that if it does bounce, you need to, if you move, and you say, for example, getting a station there, and you move and it bounces like this and it reaches there, or that signal bounces and reaches you, rather, the other way around, the moment you get closer, then you cannot find that one again because it bounces now in a different direction. So if it bounces here and bounces there and go up again, then you might miss that station. That's why it's also very difficult to, to catch this, to tune it into the right station. So why do you want to use SSB? First of all, the long range thing. Then you have free weather facts. Which is excellent if you watch the Dallas movie, they had weather facts free. They actually had to tune in again with the SSB. Of course, they lost their uh, Iridium Go again for the second time. Then you also have free email. So the free email, I think it's also a good idea, but it is slow. You, it is slower than VSAT or the Go, uh, Iridium Goes. Um, and also it's been used from what I understand, it's been used a lot in the Pacific Ocean. So that side of the, of the globe, it is used quite extensively. Now, why do you not want SSB? Almost every boat is coming out at VHF. Not all the cruisers actually switch on the SSB. You actually notice that even Dallas, they had to switch on the radio or even Ruby Rose, they also have SSB, but they never switch it on. And him himself was saying he's not even sure that he will actually switch it on ever. But it is there for emergency, so if he needs to, to, to get it, uh, switch on, it, it is there. Now, this is the problem. Not all the new catamarans or boats that's coming out of the manufacturer uh, shipyards they actually don't have SSB. So if you want to have an SSB, you need to actually buy one and install it. Um, and then you need to understand how the antennas need to be put up because some of it is actually using the, the standing rigging or um, the, the line at the back. I don't know what the line at the back is. So I don't know. I'm trying to remember whether. So that it... And for me, it does look and appear as if SSB has not kept up with the times. That technology has passed, um, went flew and flying by. So in my case, I will have two Iridium GOES. So I will have a spare Iridium GOES. So I will not be in a position. Um, yes, you might say, if I want to do the Antarctica, maybe I need to talk to the, the research stations, and they are using... Um, SSBs. So that is definitely still a consideration for me, but it is not that high on my agenda. If you want to disagree with me, please tell me which band, which radio brand, I think ICOM is still making them, which brand will be very good, and um, how do you connect it up to <laughs> a computer? I think it's very difficult. But I'm an IT guy. I should be able to connect it up to a computer. So next week, I think we will start with our um, skipper's license stuff. I got my thingy here. Look, I got stuff. I am almost a skipper. Look at this. And I've got this thing. And Yachtmaster Offshore. Awesome and lots of other things and maps i've got maps lots of maps and here's the sample oh this is a weather booklet and here's the little book that i need to read through i already browsed through most of it so we're going to join the ryA till next week then see you guys next week ciao thank you for watching